Hello, podcast listeners from around the world. Thank you for tuning into the Coffee, Health, and Science podcast today. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I've got a wonderful episode for you with show favorite Dr. Sanjeev Chopra, and he's here to help us cope with this crazy coronavirus crisis that we're all going through. Before we jump in, though, I have to tell you about a wonderful promotion that Purity Coffee is doing. It is truly extraordinary. It's called the Purity Coffee Frontlines Initiative, and here's how it works. For every new customer that signs up for Purity Coffee, Purity is going to match that equal amount of coffee and donate it to hospitals across the East Coast and the country. They're going to be giving coffee to frontline doctors, nurses, and EMTs. So just by signing up, you're donating coffee to those who are on the front lines fighting this crazy coronavirus crisis. So make sure to use promo code PODCAST if you're signing up for the first time for 10% off, and then you can feel good knowing that an equal amount of coffee is being donated to doctors, nurses, and EMTs on the front lines. I want to thank Purity personally for doing this. It's absolutely wonderful. Make sure to follow them on Instagram and check out their hashtag Purity Heroes campaign with their front lines initiative. Wonderful work you guys are doing. We love it. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the show. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the program. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started, please share the show with a friend. We appreciate when you spread the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. It is how we grow. Oh, one of my favorite guests to speak to, back on the line, a show favorite, Dr. Sanjeev Chopra. How are you doing, Dr. Chopra? Oh, I'm doing great, Jordan. How are you? I am doing excellent, just about as well you can do in these crazy, crazy times. Uh, yeah. What have you been up to during this whole pandemic? You know, uh, this is an unprecedented time for all of us. And I think it's a time for us to reflect during this time of consternation and chaos and crisis and try and get some clarity about what's important and how we can serve. So as you know, I give uh, scores and scores of talks and I travel throughout the country and internationally to do that. I'm privileged to do that. And of course, all of that is on hold. It's either been canceled or it's been postponed. I was giving a keynote uh, this past Saturday, a couple of days ago in New Haven, a global health and innovation annual conference under the aegis of Unite for Sight. And this conference attracts about 3,000 people from 50 countries. There are 50 speakers. This year, there were going to be three keynote speakers. And I was privileged to be one of them to speak on the topic of leadership. And of course, nothing live is happening, but a very, very smart and distinguished individual who had been uh, with me on a panel last year. Uh, he has been the CEO of Autism Speaks, oh, CEO yeah, of sure. yeah, CEO of March of Dimes, and a wonderful, very intelligent person. So he actually by Zoom interviewed me for an hour on the topic of leadership. Nice. And we connected with hundreds and hundreds of people from around the country, around the world. So I think there are opportunities for us. I think the healthcare workers, the grocery store workers, the policemen, fire people don't have bonus time right now. They're working extra hard. They're in the trenches. Mm -hmm. And all we can do is pray for them and express our heartful gratitude. But for many of us, time has stood still to a certain extent. And we have this bonus time from canceled travel. This conference at Yale, I would have gone there on Friday afternoon, checked into a hotel, next morning, gone, done the conference, stayed around for other talks, driven back two and a half hours, and come back on uh, Saturday. Right. So it would have been 24 hours of my time. Instead, it was one hour of my time. So let's take advantage of sure. that time and do a bunch of things. Do you think that do you think that things are ever going to really go back to being the same? I almost feel there's been a permanent shift 
in I think it's arenas. good. Yeah, you're you're very right. I think for certain things, uh, it will never be the same. I think uh, a lot of people will realize that they could have actually been very productive working for home, and that people in the future may go to work one or two days in the week. The rest of the time, they'll work from home, and they'll be equally or more productive. I think a lot of teaching will occur uh, using Skype or Zoom. Yes. Yes. I've actually reached out to the Department of Medicine at the Brigham and Women's, where I'm privileged to work as a Marshall Wolf Master Clinician Educator. And I said, all the conferences are canceled. Morning report, noon conference, walk rounds. I have a suggestion. Why don't I pilot it? Let's see if it's successful. And then if it is, then we can invite many of the senior distinguished faculty who are totally committed and dedicated towards teaching. So I'm going to do on Friday morning something called Ask the Expert. And the interns and residents in medicine and the Department of Medicine at the Brigham, uh, whoever can come on on Zoom can ask me any questions related to liver disease. Oh, I love that. And, you know, if there's a way for me to send them a slide or two or a PowerPoint presentation on some of it, I can then send it to them and they can do it. Those who can't come on live can watch a recorded version of this. Mm -hmm. um, so there are opportunities to reach out and stay connected. And I think in the future, people will say, why do we have to have a one hour lecture on jaundice? I actually want to, to, uh, clarification about something on jaundice, which might take 10 minutes. But then I can ask Dr. Chopra, I can ask Dr. Curry mm -hmm. 14 other questions related to other liver topics. I think it'll become more efficient. It'll be much more meaningful in the future, the way we teach, the way we connect with people. Um, yes. We'll celebrate things small and big with much more <laughs> mindfulness and gratitude. Now we've taken things for granted. Yes, absolutely. I think it's exposed a lot. This coronavirus has shown a spotlight on our character as individuals, yeah. as a society, yeah. as societies around the world. Yeah. You're so right, Jordan. It's brought the best and the worst in us. Yes. So yes. it depends where you're coming from, your level of consciousness and uh, what your purpose in this life is. And if it's to be giving, it's if of generosity, philanthropy, which I define as love for humanity. Uh, if it's teaching, if it's uh, sharing your talents, whatever it is, those people are doing it uh, at a good level. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Uh, what worries me is how we're handling it kind of on, on a mental health level. I think there's a lot of fear. I think there's a lot of panic. I would love to hear how you think we should be conducting ourselves, how you think we should be framing this as far as our mental framework. Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I have um, uh, put together a list of, you know, 10 or 12 things we can do to sort of recalibrate. And the first one is, uh, let's all have a solid morning routine. Mm -hmm. When you get up, I suggest the following things. We should all spring out of bed. Okay, don't loiter in bed and think, uh, oh, what's happening with coronavirus? And let me check the news mm -hmm. or check my iPhone. Spring out of bed. Mm -hmm. Go sing in the shower. Mm -hmm. Stretch. Sip your coffee. And then dress up. You don't have to wear a suit or a tie, <laughs> but dress up, even in casuals. And then go to your study or your den, wherever you sit and and work and contemplate what you're going to do. Don't go in your pajamas. It will change your whole energy level yes. if we develop that morning routine. Mm -hmm. So then get dressed and uh, sit down and jot down what you're going to do that day. Uh, a lot of us over the years have written our goals for the day and then we have an action plan. So good to get back into that habit. That might include... You know, prepare for the podcast with Jordan. Hmm. Look up this quote or look up this study. That could be call my friend, Bob Carithers in Seattle. I haven't talked to him for a while. Make sure he and his wife, Janita, and their kids are doing fine. And there could be a bunch of things. Now, 
let's say there's six things. And one of them is work on a chapter uh, on the book that I'm writing on coffee, the magical elixir. Now, it's very easy to do the easy things first and to check off five things out of the six. But you may never get to the six, which is the toughest. And here's a good rule. Do the hard things first and the easy things will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So don't do anything with the other five things which are fun to do. Call a friend, connect with somebody, you know, pay somebody a compliment, uh, something easy to do, order flowers for your mom, something like that, somebody's birthday coming up. Those are easy to do. But do the hard thing and, and say to yourself, I'm going to work on it for 20 minutes. And the next thing you know, you've been at it for an hour. Absolutely. And, and the ideas flew. So set up a morning routine, get dressed, um, do the hard things first. Take use of that bonus time. If you've thought of writing a book, if you've thought of preparing a TEDx talk, get cracking on it. Mm -hmm. You know, just do it. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, I'm right now because I have a lot of bonus time. I'm writing two books at the same time, <laughs> one with a colleague, one by myself. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually chipping away at it. And my friend with whom I'm working is still seeing patients by telemedicine and he's quite busy, but he, again, he's got a lot of bonus time. He doesn't have to drive to the hospital and park his car and, and then see patients and then come back home, drive. He's saving all that extra time. So he's been amazingly productive. And uh, we may well finish this book in, in two months or less. So take <laughs> oh, wow. use of the bonus time. Connect with your friends with Zoom, with your family. You can hold parties. You can do cheers. You hold up your glass of uh, wine <laughs> or your ginger webcam. ale. Or coffee. The, webcam. <laughs> uh, the, the key here now, the very important key, when you do the cheers, you got to look into the other person's eyes. So <laughs> you can do that on Zoom. I think uh, be kind. You know, mm. the His Holiness the Dalai Lama once said, be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. Mm. He said, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. <laughs> This is a time where there's so much consternation and grief and fear that if we can be extra kind, just reach out, thank somebody, uh, say, I'm there for you. What can I do for you? You see somebody, if you're driving to the pharmacy to get your medicines, you know, you see somebody smile at them. Uh, there's a homeless person sitting on the street, reach out in some meaningful way mm. and, and help them out. So be extra kind. Um, is something I, I really encourage. Mm -hmm. um, have a gratitude journal. Um, uh, many of us who have a gratitude journal uh, write an entry in it every week. Let's say on a Sunday evening, we're reflecting on what's in store the following week, but reflect on what's happened the past week and write down what you're grateful for. It increases oh, your happiness quotient. Oh, yeah. Uh, be courageous. This is the time for us to be courageous. Yes. You know, I'm so glad. So, you said Winston that, Churchill, yeah, once said, courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality that guarantees others. And we can look around at what people are doing to serve at this point doctors, nurses, medical students, nursing students, volunteers you know, firemen, people in the grocery markets, filling the shelves. I mean, amazing. What courage they're displaying. Absolutely. And then I, uh, the last thing I recommend is that many of us are used to affirmations and we say the affirmation in the morning. We may get up and spring out of bed and in the shower instead of singing, say an affirmation, today will be a great day. I will achieve a lot of my goals. I'll be happy, productive. You know what? It has value. But even more powerful is to say an affirmation at night as your head is hitting the pillow. Mm, I like that. And the brain works on it. And here's an affirmation which uh, my dear friend Adrian Wilkins and I have taught in a happiness workshop. 
And we've actually borrowed it from an author and maybe modified it some. And the affirmation is as follows. So put your head on the pillow as you're going to sleep. Softly say it two or three times in your head. You may want to write it down initially and put it near your night table, on your night table, but later on it becomes a habit. Now when I put my head on the pillow, it just comes to me. And the affirmation is as follows. I expand in abundance, success, happiness, and love every day. I'll say it again. I expand in abundance, success, happiness, and love every day and inspire others to do the same. Oh, I love it. And the inspire others to do the same is not out of a sense of uh, grandiosity or being pompous or arrogant. It's like, if I have something that I can share I should do it. Mm -hmm. If you have a talent you can share, you should do it. You know, Voltaire, the French philosopher, had a great saying. He said, every man is guilty of all the good he did not do. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I love that quote. So I think these are, you know, 10 things we can do uh, to recalibrate our life during this time of chaos and consternation and uh, share it with friends and Absolutely wonderful, Sanjeev. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I want to touch on a few things here. I loved what you said about courage, and I know that you're a fan of history. Do you think it's yeah. important to connect with our history and realize humans are resilient? Humans are benevolent. Humans, we've been through worse. We're, we, we've faced incredible odds and had insurmountable courage in the past, and we're capable of that. All of us are. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I think you can look at history. You can look at struggles people had as a nation. You can think of Gandhi's salt march mm -hmm. in 1930. So, you know, salt was plentiful in India, and yet the British had imposed this exorbitant tax right. on, on the Indians on salt. And Gandhi writes to the Viceroy, and he says, I'm going to conduct a salt march. India's... Uh, since India's freedom should first begin for the poor, I'm going to conduct the salt march. And he's going to walk 225 miles. And the British miscalculate. They think he's 63. He's frail. He won't be able to do it. It's going to backfire. They give him permission. And he assembles 77 followers. He at 63 is the oldest. The youngest is 16. He has Hindus, Christians, Muslims, untouchables. They start to march, and as they go from one village to another, throngs of people join him. Oh, my God. And some 27 days later, he arrives at the ocean, at the sea. He puts his hand, and by many accounts, when he lifts it from the water, there's salt. And he declares, henceforth, we shall not pay tax to the British on salt. That image captivated the imagination of millions of Indians, but also parliamentarians in England, leaders in America, in Europe, British mm -hmm. cotton factory workers. It launched India's freedom movement. Over the next six months, there were 5,000 salt marches. 100,000 Indians were arrested, jailed, and beaten. But it led to India's freedom movement, to India's freedom. So I think reflect on that. Think of the Nelson Mandela's yes. of the world. You know, think Real of courage. Martin yes. Luther King Jr. Absolutely. Think of Nelson Mandela's wisdom and his forbearance when asked after being in prison for 27 years, did he harbor resentment against his captors? He said, no, no, no. I have no bitterness. I have no resentment. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill our enemies. <laughs> it will only kill you, right? Absolutely. Amazing. They're totally amazing. And, and then, you know, currently we have some amazing young leaders, Greta Thunberg, the Swedish mm -hmm. activist, who got nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. She didn't get it. she would probably get it next year. Uh, but their young people is people that I, I, I look forward to learning from them, to being inspired by them. I think they are the future leaders. Mm -hmm. So we can sort of think about the past, but we can also project into the future. Yes, absolutely, Sanjeev. That's perfect. And and I just want to finish wrapping up by saying, you know, touching on what you said about the kindness when, when talking to Dr. Joel Wade, happiness expert and host of uh, the Mastering Happiness podcast, he talked about these micro moments of happiness, these micro engagements. And I think that's how we hold on to our humanity in all of this. 
You know, sure. We Beautiful. follow the guidelines. Yeah. We wash our hands. We stay six feet away. But hold on to our humanity and hold on to the kindness. So I agree yeah. with you, Sanjeev. Thank you for, for sharing that with us today. Absolutely. Uh, listen, where can we send listeners? SanjeevChopra.com. Anything you want to catch us up on? Uh, I know your wife, Amita. We love Amita. She's doing yeah. some interesting work. Maybe you want to talk about that before you sign off? Yeah, very briefly. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, our son is working for a company in, in New York. And he said, Mom, uh, the human resources person was wondering if you could teach anyone interested in our company meditation. So as you know, she teaches meditation. It's a structured four-day thing in our home. She does it for free, and it's about an hour and a half each day. But, of course, that is not something feasible during these times. Mm -hmm. So she did a 20-minute session with them, talked about a little bit about the science, what we are finding from modern science in terms of functional MRI and increase in telomere length in people who meditate. And then she taught the group. So the first time, eight people or so signed up. Then she did it again for them. This time, something like 25 people signed up. And, uh, you know, she teaches them a five-minute breathing technique or a five-minute mantra meditation. So the whole thing takes 20 minutes. It's incredible. Um, I've offered it through the leadership at the Brigham and BI to the young doctors. And uh, Amit has said, you know, if nobody signs up, it's fine. If one person signs up, it's fine. If 28 people sign up, it's fine. Um, she's so happy doing that. We have a dear friend, a couple in Atlanta, you know, Andrew Salisbury and Amber. And Amber does workshops around the country using Zoom. And she had Amita again do a meditation thing. She may be doing it for an, another Harvard University department sometime very soon. So this is, again, an opportunity to use Skype or Zoom and connect with people and, and lead them through a simple meditation, a simple mindfulness and how you get anchored and find solace mm -hmm. and feel more grounded. I love it. I can't wait to catch up with Amita as soon as possible yeah. and all of her wonderful work in meditation. My fans have heard the interview I did with her. Um, so fascinating what you guys are doing with the science well, behind you. meditation. Thanks. Yeah. I love that. That's really one of one of my favorite subjects. I'll let you go, Sanjeev. Thank you so much for taking the oh, time. My buddy. pleasure. Yeah. All, all right. the best. Stay in touch, Keep buddy. Smiling. All yeah. right. We'll do. Take Bye. care. Bye. I <laughs> love talking to Sanjeev and I love how he signs off before the show is over too. That's like his little calling card. I love it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Stay tuned to the Coffee Health and Science Podcast for more Sanjeev, for more Dr. Coffee. We have some coffee history coming at you soon. Uh, so much exciting stuff. Really, really appreciate you staying subscribed, sharing the show, giving us your good ratings and reviews. I am truly honored to be working in this field of coffee, health, and science. It is fascinating beyond description, and it's really thanks to you listeners that I get to keep doing this. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the Coffee, Health, and Science podcast, folks. Have an extraordinary day out there. Bye-bye.